Hey guys, welcome to the channel again. You know it's your best friend, Joe Jaguar. Now, what am I doing today? Uh, today, I want to see, can a cell phone be used for astrophotography? So I would say yes, no, sometimes yes, a little bit. So let me explain. In the 90s, I used to do these, I used to use film camera, SLR cameras, and these are just some of the uh, photos that I've done. Now, this is only probably half. Uh, why? Because probably all the bad ones that didn't come out good, I discarded. So that, you, that pile used to be a lot more let me course but if you would like to help me out uh, and grow uh, so I can give you guys more videos more content more uh, likes and you know things like that I would appreciate it so so today's video is can you do astrophotography with a cell phone now I'm using the phone I'm using right now is the uh, iPhone 13 Max Pro. But what I was using the last year or so was the iPhone 11. So um, this one's a little bit better. Now this one costs, I believe is like $1,500 that I'm talking about Canadian. And so it's not very cheap, but what's good about it for you guys out there that just wanna start astrophotography uh, type of thing, it has a lot of features like it can zoom up to 15 times uh, where the iPhone 11 uh, just zoomed in five times I think or was it three times I think it was three times so now it's up to uh, I think a picture was five times and then a video you can blow it up three times um, so the new I iPhone 13 you can go up to 15 times which you know what it is not super close like start some stuff with it like for instance the platy star cluster i would say you need like 15 to 16 power through a telescope uh otherwise um it's gonna you're gonna be too close actually i'll show, I'll show you what telescope i mean like something like this a four inch f5 refractor uh, the lowest you could probably go on this guy with the two inch eyepiece is probably about 15 16 power which is just enough to capture like the Platy star cluster. You can probably catch um, M31, uh, Andromeda Galaxy, and, uh, maybe the North American, Pelican Nebula. There's a lot of big clusters out there. There's a lot of big nebulas out there. Um, so I would say you could start it. And what you could do is, uh, you know, take some shots uh, just with on a tripod. Let me show you what I mean. So if you have a tripod that you can put your cell phone camera on, uh, make, your, make the phone uh, look this way or that way, but you can take shots now of like constellations in the sky. You can do stuff like constellations, uh, you can do star trails, you can take uh, you know, wide uh, field viewing, maybe landscape, that type of thing. So this can get you started. Now, um, if you have an equatorial mount, you can then go to the next step. Let me show you. Now, let's say the next step is, this is an EQ5 tripod and mount. Now, if you have one of these, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So if you have one of these little 120 thread camera adapters, put your uh, cell phone holder on this guy here. And then what you could do is put your cell phone like that. So let me show, let me face it to you. Uh, now, mind you, like in uh, those star trackers that they sell, um, it's basically like an EQ2, 
uh, on with, of course it has an interface or and it has some digital stuff, but it's like an EQ2 that's motorized. That's all a star tracker is. So it's, they're fairly, well, I wouldn't say cheap. They go between, it depends which model, the regular model and the pro version. They go between three to $500, that's Canadian. So they're not so cheap, but basically uh, what you could do is, again, if you have any type of, uh, I would say EQ2 should be the bare minimum. You really should maybe think of an EQ3, 4, or 5 if you want it to be really uh, rock steady uh, and, and solid. Um, anyway, uh, I'm just trying to get this, or actually that way you can kind of see. So I got it on the rings. I got it on one of those camera holders. And this way, uh, what you could do is... Your EQ mount, if you're polar aligned and you set your latitude to wherever location you're at and you put dual axis drives, the one that has that hand control, um, then it's going to be tracking at sidereal rate. You can start then to do some awesome stuff. Now, like again, this way you can do more longer instead of it being just on a camera tripod like I show you or one of these type of tripods and you're probably limited to about 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. Uh, this way, because you're polar aligned and tracking, you can probably go up to 45 seconds. Maybe you can push it up to 60 seconds. Exposures, again, you could always do uh, 100 st uh, photos, then stack them in a software and give you a really good result uh, type of thing. Now, the next thing that you could do, of course, uh, and this, again, is going to be more for wide field uh, of viewing. Now, when I did play around with my uh, iPhone 13, a Pro Max, um, it did go up to like a 49-second exposure. So the darker it is, the more it's going to adjust that, so you need more exposure. So I think it could probably go, because uh, I'm, I'm in a white zone, and, you know, it's dark, whatever, in your backyard. But I think if you really go to a truly dark area or if it's truly dark, that exposure time could probably go to, I would guess, about a, a minute maximum. Now, with a minute maximum, you could do a lot of decent stuff with a, a cell phone by stacking type of thing. Now, the next way to get more out of a cell phone astrophotography is let me show you. Okay, so the next way to get more out of your cell phone, instead of just riding on top and just whatever power, because it's just gonna be zero power, is put, let's say, an eyepiece in here. Uh, and then you gotta get one of these camera adapters. There's several different kinds on the market, uh, whichever one you like. And then basically what you do is attach that, let's say, to your uh, eyepiece and you could also borrow it too if you want more power this is a five times power mate uh, you know if Teleview makes some of the best barlows there are so if you want to get really close like on a planet or something put that in put the eyepiece and you could really bring that up really close but anyway I just wanted to show you guys here what you do is once you got this locked on the only tricky part is getting that cell phone uh, you know, because the lens is not actually as big as, if you look closely, it's maybe one quarter the size of that lens you see, the true inner lens. So it's just getting that in place uh, where the beam of light comes. And sometimes it's tricky, you have to move it. But I would say the average person after one or two minutes, you got it right. And if this guy's tracking, now you can power through the telescope. Uh, now, this is just an Acromat, a 4-inch F5. That's probably not the best scope to use as astrophotography, but there's a lot of ED out there, Apple Chromatic, you know, that type of thing. This is just an example. So you could do this type of thing, and once it's locked down, uh, type, and you're tracking, uh, you're polar aligned, now that's it. You could probably do at least a, a minute exposure before. There's always going to be some errors. And that's why uh, the, the fancier people have auto guiders uh, and auto cameras or, you know, in the past they used to do manual guiding. Even the go-to mounts will have some errors in it. And that's why most people also need a, another small telescope or a small guiding camera. And that keeps it 100% on track 
type of thing. So that one tells the uh, scope you're starting to go a little bit off and then it corrects itself. Anyway, I don't want to get too fancy on that, but you could use a cell phone through here. And in the last year, you guys know that I did a lot of uh, uh, this type of astrophotography this way. And that's uh, maybe all that you might need. It's all that I want to do right now. Um, I don't know how deep you guys want to go. But anyway, next week, next episode, what we'll do is I'll show you guys what we used to do in the 80s. 90s and what would be like a good uh rig uh to to use like now astrophotography uh beyond the cell phone uh capabilities joe jaguar like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys on my uh next video uh for you guys that are already subscribed i appreciate it um and you newcomers as well if you guys uh, see anybody that is in the hobby and needs help uh, send them a link their way uh, if you're on the forums, pass on my link to them if they need help as well. Um, and that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, guys, one more thing I wanted to add. Even though the cell phone, uh, even through the telescope, is okay, it's decent, um, it's not perfect. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen in the last year, I've used that way with pretty much every telescope I have over there. And the image through the eyepiece is 10 times better, 100 times better than what the cell phone video and picture shows. Take that into consideration. Everything that I've done, I'm not stacking. It's just a single shot type of thing. So if you're using maybe um, stacking software with the cell phone, then it'll be 10 times better. But I'm just saying my shots were just single stack with no software or editing. So take that into consideration. So the image through the eyepiece was a thousand times better than what I showed you guys in all those videos that I did. Okay, so here is a couple shots through the telescope. That one was from a 70 millimeter. And here's a Saturn, uh, of course, through some of the refractors that I've done in the past through only an iPhone with zero editing. There's Jupiter. Again, this is only cell phone, no, no dedicated camera. This is Venus. And now you're getting a close-up shot of the moon. Uh, so you can do shots like this with a cell phone camera through the telescope. And it'll never be as good as a dedicated camera. Uh, but, you know, you will see decent. And if you just want to just dabble in astrophotography, that could be it.